Hear ye, hear ye, gather round for yet another edition of Young Kings Wrestling featuring the Sovereign Sound Board. As always, you can find us on most platforms that stream your favorite podcast episodes, including Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Google Podcasts, and iHeartRadio, among others. And if you're listening on iTunes, leave us a review of the five-star kind. Links to all of the platforms and the merchandise available only at ykwrestling.com. Yeah, that's how we do over here. Oh, As yeah. always, I am the Thespian T.C. Fontaine, joined by... In honor of this man, for he just put on a dope show, the Heartbreak Kid, Rick Michaels. Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Rick Michaels. Yes, sir. That yes, sounds like you could, uh, you can maybe be on that related, uh, recommended section next to an episode of Smacking It Raw. That type of thing. <laughs> you get my drip. If you know, you know. Yeah, if you know, you know. Hey, man, uh, what you been up to this week, bro? Been another week, work week. Got Hell a holiday yeah. tomorrow. People off work. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. I ain't had a three day weekend, and I don't know how long. I'm happy. Yeah, I'll be off work anyway. So, like every <laughs> holiday this summer is falling on a Monday, and I'm off anyway, so I can't really enjoy it. It's fucked up. Shit. That that, Shit. that holiday nice. pay would be nice. It would be nice. Don't get me started, man. That's crazy. Nah, like June Teeth was on a Monday. On. Fucking Fourth of July was on a Monday. Labor Day is always on a Monday. I'm not getting paid. That's a fact. <laughs> I'm not getting paid to be off. It's, it's kind of fucked up. I'm not gonna lie. That's a fact. That's a fact. We got we got to do something about that. All right, we be. I need that time and a half. Yeah, something like we have me go home for for no reason. Now. Nah, uh, I don't know. It's been catching up on all this, all this content. You know what I'm saying? All this, all this wrestling. It's a lot. Uh, I, I, I was backed up for a good minute. You know what I'm saying? Because they, they, they churning out everything. Thanks. So, like the last week, I just went through all the A and E docs, the rivals joints. Those, those are dope. Those are really dope. Yeah, I, uh, I caught the, uh, the Eddie and Ray one last week. Like I, we recorded, and I seen it was on, so I'm like. You know what? I I haven't watched any of these, so I'm gonna watch this one as is live. And it's Eddie Guerrero, man, and Ray Mysterio. Yeah. I thought uh yeah, I thought I caught uh, Sasha Banks was on there, of course. This is about Eddie Guerrero. And I, I thought I caught her in some cap, but uh apparently she wasn't online. <laughs> Cause I'm not I mean, this is my first time ever hearing that she was at the Eddie Guerrero tribute show. I wasn't aware of that. But apparently she's talked about it before. It's, uh, you know, shout out to my dude trying to be famous. You know, he's been on here for a minute. It's been a minute. He need to come back on here. But uh, yeah, he uh, he hit me with an article from like a few years back, and she had talked about it then. So I was like, okay, because I had never heard about it. Like she she said she showed up and she didn't know what was going on because you know it's two thousand five. We don't have cell phones to keep us updated all the time. And somebody had let her know like Eddie Guerrero died. You find out your favorite wrestler die and you was expecting to see them that night, kind of. But but you didn't have a computer. Cause I, I, mean, I knew I had a computer at about 5 30 that morning. I I mean I knew like I I had to log on to the internet. So like I think in 05, if you not connected to the internet and not connected to a computer because you out and you're busy getting ready to go to a show, probably, you know, you probably didn't get to hear about it, but I don't know. If yeah, she no, capping, like, right. it, it's messed up. But if she not, it, it's kind of messed. It's messed up too. But the situation itself, so like it might, it might, it might be a little bit in there. But um, 
No, like I, I I've said this before. Like I, I was on dot com every morning before I got on the bus to school, so I knew everything that was going on. Like if when I missed pay per views and stuff like that, yeah. I go on there and I see what the headline is. That's how I found out Edge cashed in on Cena, and I was Dang. mad as hell the rest of the morning. Um, Dang. but yeah, no, I, I never forget that day. I, I logged on, I saw. I thought it was a joke. I thought it was like kayfabe or something like that. Same. And I seen Eddie and the dates and, I and stuff like it that. Didn't make like, sense. like, right. Like it, it, that bugged me out. So I imagine, I don't know, I don't know man. Imagine me having dial up internet at the time. Yes, we had dial up internet in two thousand five. It was a time. Yes, we, we we got Cox cable a couple months later after they stalled me out. But, uh, <laughs> Imagine having dial-up internet, and I go on because, like, I, I know that they recording, uh, they doing a, a, a double taping for Raw and SmackDown that night. So, like, mm-hmm. I'm logging on, like, I like to, you know, see see what to expect, see if something might happen. And I log on, and I see a picture of Eddie Guerrero, and I'm like, oh, Eddie Guerrero, that's my dog. And then the rest of it loaded up like 30 seconds later, and it said Eddie Guerrero dies or something like that. I'm like. I'm just gonna log up, uh, but nah, yeah, the uh, the rivals itself, it was it was ill. Um, yeah, I fucked with that, but uh, outside of that, you know, we watched wrestling all week long, and outside of those docs, I uh, I thought it was appropriate to run back just this week. We had the, the first ever UK show in 30 years in WWE, and then we mm-hmm. had uh, you know, a, a memorial service of sorts. For NXT UK this afternoon, and uh, so I had to watch the the first ever UK tournament. Caught a little bit of that. Uh, I, I might not finish it. I watched like the first episode, first round. Pete Dunn was fresh faced as hell. This dude was like eighteen years old, something like that. Yeah, yeah like really. Kids. Young. They was definitely Tyler Bates. <laughs> Same thing. Because <laughs> Tyler Bates was twenty five now. Yeah. Or 24. Yeah. I think it's 24. So, yeah, yeah, it was, that was back in, like, 16, 17, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, man, these dudes was – they're growing up Kids. now. And they was cold back then, and they still exactly. cold now. And they, they've they gotten just more experience under their belt. They got more muscle. These were some little niggas, bro, before they got to mm. the performance center. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. Oof. It's rough so, out here. Yeah. But – uh. Outside of that, man, uh, I ain't really watching nothing else. What are, you, you watch O three still? Still on O oh, three? I am one week away from Shane getting his junk electrocuted by nice. Kane because I just watched the one where um, uh, him and Bischoff are supposed to have a match in the main event. They start fighting, and then Kane pulls up, tombstone him on the steps. Yeah, and uh, I think the next week after that is when like they get into it. And uh, Rob comes out to try and s- it saves him from uh, whatever, and then he has the the shock, shock the uh, cables and stuff like yeah, that. Jumper cables, man. Electrocutes the shit out of him with. Who who thought who thought of that? I I want to know. Was that? I, f- I feel like Bruce might have something to do with that because you know his reputation out here. Yeah. Because Bruce the one that came up with the custody story, <laughs> so. I, I it's very know. telling. He was the only was, person from creative that was on that doc talking about it. <laughs> it was either it was either Bruce or it was Michael. Yeah, Michael Hayes. Which I, I don't know if you've seen that 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 picture that came up um, like a couple hours ago when um, is Roman in uh, Roman Bret Hart with, with Bret and, and Michael Hayes and, and Heyman. It's yeah, like yeah. I, I feel like I feel like Michael wear the same two outfits every time you see him on the the vest. <laughs> the vet that that purple vest or the gold vest and that that hat. I guess all he be wearing every time he on he get dude, on, dude, on dude. camera somewhere. I'm telling you, man. Now Roman, <laughs> this is what you're gonna do. <laughs> We're gonna have your cousin come in. Uh, that, that's kind of my Michael Hayes voice. Um, yeah, bro. We're gonna talk about that. that. That was a fun little event. But uh, before we get into that, uh, happy birthday. To our favorite, uh, one of our favorite group members of the New Day, Mr. Xavier Woods, Austin Creed, the the creator of Up Up Down Down, the one of the longest reigning tag team champions 
one of the most decorated tag team champions of all time. This guy was a tag team champion, R Truth, mm. in TNA. If you don't remember. This dude was a substitute. You don't know about that. <laughs> for one of the greatest Cincinnati Bengals of all time, Pac Man Jones. It's a fact. Xavier Woods, 36 years old. Man. You 36. Happy birthday. My <laughs> uh, also, happy birthday to Damon Wayans or the Wayans brothers. You know, he was like the, the eighth born Wayans brother. There's too many of them. Off. There's way too many of them. <laughs> I'm just like, like not even the Wayans brothers. It, it's only like five of them. It's, it's everybody kids. <laughs> like, right, right. But the, here's the thing. The, the dude, the dude that's in um, let's be cops. That's one of their kids. Yeah, that's Damon. Right? That's Damon's son. Oh my god! Yeah, it's Damon Junior. Too much. It's too much. So like Damon, <laughs> Damon got like two or three sons. Like mm-hmm. Marlon got like two daughters. It's like all right. Let me just break down the Wes brothers from what I know. Is is probably I'm probably way off with a lot of this, but it's like five brothers. It's it's uh uh uh, uh Keenan Ivory Wayans, I think is the oldest one. No, nah, there's, there's another one that no, nah, it's, it's more than five brothers. It's five brothers that are famous. It's actually like eight brothers. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, eight brothers and like four sisters, some shit like that. Yeah. And then like all of them got kids, and then like some of their kids, like Damon Damon Junior got like no nah, Damon Senior got like three sons, and two of them is famous. Yeah, it's way too many of them motherfuckers. Like. One of their wow. unfamous sisters got a daughter that was on Wild and Out. It's, it's a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> is it more who, who is it more Wayne's brothers or more Anna White's? Which one you think? <laughs> I, I, I don't even know at this point. Like they they popping out another one every other day. We're gonna talk about that later. Right. But uh, they just stay everywhere. Cause I, I see, didn't, know, uh, I didn't know about like Nia Jax and all them, and uh, uh, right. an extra Uso until like the last, the past year. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. They just yeah. be out there hiding. There's another Fatu that I've seen on the Indies, and I'm trying to find out who he related to, but I can't find nothing out on the internet. But it's another one of them motherfuckers out here that's that's coming up. Oh. <sighs> It's, it's a lot of y'all. <laughs> no, shout out to Damon. Uh, happy birthday to Damon Wayans. Happy birthday to Awesome Kong. And then uh, happy birthday to Beyonce. You know? Beyonce? Beyonce? Happy birthday to yeah. Beyonce. September 4th. It's, uh, September, if you have not known. Last time we recorded, it was August. And now it's the greatest month of the year. It's gonna, we're going to have a fun time. Then my dude got yeah. his second greatest month of the year coming up. So it's going to be a fun time. Oh, yeah. Big facts. Uh, so what we a got for the Royal going to be. Oh, my bad. Great time. Yeah, man. A month, a month from now, it's going to be uh, a spectacular time in history. So, yeah. Yeah. Big facts. Yeah. Niggas is old. Yeah. Niggas is turning. Th- yeah, that. that- them threes. <laughs> this is something about them threes. I ain't, I ain't fucking with right now. Oh man, I've been downplaying it for like the last couple months, but now it's like it's, I have, it's and now I just realized, like, yo, my birthday in two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, man. Man. hey, we age gracefully, yeah. bro. We black. We Facts. black don't crash. Don't nobody, don't nobody know if I don't say nothing. So I'm cool. Thanks. Because if I let all this go, I look like I'm like 22. So. Right. I might have to. I'm gonna go through my midlife crisis like ten years early, but that's all good. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. We good. Thanks. <laughs> hey man, uh, where are we at for the royal address of rumors? Oh man, so I think this is probably gonna be the biggest thing on here. But um, you know, all week long, WWE was out, you know, promoting Clash of the Castle in Wales, so. You know, my guy Ariel got, came out there with BT Sports to get some interviews in. The biggest one on the week, on the weekend, was Triple H, and uh, he had a whole slew of things to talk about, oh, including yeah. including some topics that y'all 
you niggas been speculating about since he took the job. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just give some of the cliff notes. But basically, uh, number one, the whole him making the transition into being head of creative over Vince, he just said straight up, like, listen, this is not one of the things where he's running the show behind the scenes or he's home texting me and stuff like that. He says, paraphrasing, but he's like, basically he said, look, you can't book the show the way I would book the show. You got to book it the way you would book it because it has to be your vision because you the guy right now. Like, don't sit up here and think, oh, well, what Vince would do it like this way. No, no. This is basically he's given his blessing. Like, this yeah. is your show now. You run it the way you see fit. That was one. Um, Just keep making me money, pal. Exactly. Pretty much. Um, another another big one that y'all just lost your heads about um, uh, the, the thing about AEW. So let, let, me, let, let me let me make this let me make this as plain as I can for you niggas once again. Because I, I thought I found it funny how everybody wanted to act like they was pulling receipts. It's like, oh, he said this. He said this two years ago when it started. What he said was, and I, I, I'm going to quote it correctly. He said, in his mind, he does not see NXT as a developmental brand. He sees them as a third brand. As he what should. is Triple H's position? What, 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 the, the, the big key point in this, and this is what y'all don't y'all fail to see. What is Triple H's position in the company? I'm gonna let y'all know if y'all don't know. Uh, executive vice, uh, executive vice president of talent relations, and uh, mm. he's the head of creative. Mm. Okay, he's currently the head of creative now. Yes. Um. So previously he was the head of NXT creative. He was still like vice president right. of some shit. Right. Right. So EVP talent relations, and he was running NXT at that time. So he was not the chairman of the board. He was not CEO. He was not the head of creative. That title happened to belong to Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon runs the entire company at that time. Vince McMahon said NXT is developmental. In his eyes, NXT is developmental, and that's all they're going to be. So y'all are telling me that Triple H's word in that quote meant more than Vince's did. Okay. All right. So that that's why we out here making all this noise about oh now he want to say that they're they're not they're they're developmental when he was saying it was the third brand he wasn't the boss right he wasn't what like, he was of course if you if you had a project that you got to be in charge of and said okay this is developmental you take it you do what you want to do with it and you build it up to a point where you have a steady audience that's constantly growing to the point where it has like a cult following at this point. And you say you see it as bigger than what it is. I mean, would you not sit up there and tell press that, hey, yeah, we ain't no, we ain't no developmental. We a third brand. We just like we on the same par with them. Of course, you're gonna big up your own baby. Like, why wouldn't you? It's yours. But you're not running the company, and what the company says goes. So you niggas need to learn how to read. That's one thing. Um, but yeah. He told it like it is, because now he is running the show. And he said, look, they beat our developmental. Great. I find it funny because the, the biggest person that was talking about that was Jericho, which I, I this needs to be said. <laughs> All right. Chris, there, there, was a, there was so much respect I had for you before you went in to almost exclusively white. And it's like year after year after year, you just dwindle it down. Tony Khan, Anthony, is 12 years your junior. There is no reason for you to have that man's meat in your mouth like this. Number right. one, that's not his money. That's his father's money. Talking right. about, yeah, yeah, my boss has more uh, money than your boss. That's talk his to him father's about money. Like, <laughs> that man. Because wrestling that is a fans, y'all, y'all forget who the real people running these companies are. It, it's not Thank Tony you. Khan. Like, he, he, like, he the booker. Triple H is right. the booker. These guys aren't running that, the company. They ain't cutting the checks. Thank you. That man did they not find finance people, but they ain't cutting the anything. Checks. That man did not finance anything. Like you talking about him, like he's Shane, basically. Like he's Shane McMahon. Right. That's how you talking about him. That man never once cut anybody's check or finance anything. That's not what this is. So Shane has cut checks before. He he not really you know the best at it. Yeah. You know. And he and he runs his own company. That that's half the reason yeah. why he was away from WWE. But point is. 
listen, you, you got to stop this nonsense. And I, I, it was funny to me because you took so much offense to that statement that, oh, yeah, you talking about you changing the narrative that we, we beat your developmental. You said they was going to beat Raw inside of, what, six months? That still ain't happened yet. And Raw was trash for a long time. So if, if we if we going to talk about Cat, let's talk about Cat on both ends. You know, like, that, that, that that's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> We 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 don't we don't want to we 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 don't want to just keep it one sided. That's all I'm saying. Keep keep that conversation going real quick. <laughs> I'm I'm over here looking something up. All right, all right, yeah. Um, another thing was the potential returns that are coming. Um, because Ariel asked him about you know a couple names in particular: Sasha, Bray, Braun Strowman. Um. The Rock potentially, uh, obviously, most of them. He's not. He's not just you know giving spoilers away. But Braun, spoiler, is supposed to be on his way back as early as tomorrow. Um, Sasha was already reportedly back in the fold, but he's not going to say that in no interviews. Um, mm. Bray, he's you know like, and he was very complimentary of Bray too, which tells you something because a lot of a lot of reports from you know old regime was that he was difficult to work with and he didn't so much say that you know he was perfect but his creative mind which we already know it makes him so much fun to work with so he said basically you know never say never the door is open but we don't have confirmation on that and we probably won't which is a good thing um and the rock obviously basically he just said look he he's waiting on him because he talked about how, you know, he mentioned that 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 adrenaline rush that he gets when he's been taking elbows, the people's that. elbow. Take and sure. He talked about how he goosebumps. get hit, how he get goosebumps and something like, yo, like you're not getting that in Hollywood. So yeah, there's not. only one place in the world that you're gonna get that rush, and the the time is ticking. You know, there's there's a a time frame where you can still do this, and it's running out. So. I think the closest uh, that he'd been to those goosebumps in the last three years is maybe the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Like, cause that that that's the second that's that's the only other place that you you have that kind of atmosphere year right. after year. But um, yeah, no, I, if you're a gambling man, you could expect to see at least three out of four come back. Um, perfect world, all of them. Yeah. But yeah, no, if you haven't seen that interview, that interview is. Some of the best work Ariel's done with BT Sports because that interview was, I was glued to the TV watching this joint. Imagine ESPN not paying him. Mm. That's a whole other topic for another day. Yeah, this this ain't the show for that. But you, you feel yeah, me. yeah. Uh, I, I can cover that on Havoc Hour. Yeah. Uh, real quick, you talk about Jericho. I it just reminded me of this tweet. Uh, what's what what do you call him? What's uh what's Alka Seltzer? Yeah, Alka Seltzer. No, what's his homeboy name? What you call him? Oh, Broke Dick Bryan. Broke Dick Bryan. Uh, yeah. Made a tweet. It, it's coming up on a year because I remember this tweet. Uh, this oh, was man. apparently AW like beat Raw in the demo or some shit. Mm-hmm. And then uh, this dude tweets out. Uh, this is this is before the uh, the stadium show they did at the uh, the U.S. Open Stadium last year, like the week yeah. before. This dude yeah, said, "Grand Grand Slam or whatever." Yeah. This dude said next week could be a massacre. Hey, they they haven't touched raw since. Uh, <laughs> so, for what it's worth, interesting. I always think it's funny. Uh, it's hilarious. To, so, uh, I'm on Wikipedia. I'm just refreshing Wikipedia. All Out is on right now. Uh, probably tap into that later. But uh, yeah, I'm on Wikipedia just refreshing the results. And the Joker won uh, the casino ladder match. I'm trying to find out who the fuck the Joker was. It doesn't say on Wikipedia. Uh, But the Joker uh, apparently is associated with Stokely Hathaway and Ethan Page and Lee Moriarty and and Billy and Austin Gunn and W. Morrissey. Maybe it's a fake update because, you know, Wikipedia be with the fake updates. Mm -hmm. So if you can find something. I will go on Twitter right now. You know, Twitter be making my computer run slow when I'm over here recording. Yeah, it's interesting. So, oh, this this this, this popped up. So it says the 
Penta. Penta was the uh, second, or Penta was the uh, one of the last people to come in. A bunch of hooded people took out all the competitors. Oh. Somebody climbed up the ladder to get the chip. That someone was Stokely Hathaway. And the Joker comes out and all black wearing a face mask, gets in the ring, and Stokely handed him the chip. And he never reveals himself, but he just walked out with Stokely and the rest of his group. Now, apparently, uh, if you take a good look at him outside of the mask, it looks like a very familiar face, which we've talked about before we got on the show. Hmm. So uh, that prediction that you had that we, we haven't talked about on here yet, but um, that might happen. Because uh, well, why I don't put think... that? Why put him with Stokely though? Is my thing. I, I I don't I don't know. That that's the only that's the only weird thing. Uh, questionable decisions upon questionable decisions. Unless it's somebody else. Yeah, I mean, I if it's somebody else, about. who's yeah. he speculating about? Let, let's just let's just stop with all the all the all the secretiveness. Uh, all right, my prediction. Uh, it is not more so a prediction because I, I highly doubt it's going to happen. It's more so what I want to happen, what should happen. The right thing to do is MJF being the Joker, yeah. winning it, cashing in his title shot after CM Punk inevitably wins later on this year. Yeah. Will they do that? I doubt it. But if they do, I don't say a negative word about AEW or Tony Yayo's booking or none of that. Uh, I will say until our award show in December. How about that? Yeah. So, uh, according to this, they said that it, it very much looks like him. And uh, Fightful's been talking all week long about how he's been in town. So, that's a possibility. Uh, I also said that it, the Joker could potentially be Adam Cole mm -hmm. because it's uh, apparently he is uh, healed up and ready to come back. And I, I said that. If if he's if he's paired up with Stokely, I could see that because they've like they haven't like worked so much together on screen a lot, but like you've it's seen some indie like, stuff, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in the indie stuff like that. And you've seen them like do a bunch of different videos together, so they're familiar with each other. Um yeah, MJF and Stokely is odd. That that that's different. It would make for some some good TV. I might tap in to see some of that, but um yeah, I, I don't know. You'd have to explain that one, how that how that came to be. Yeah, so uh, we're gonna refresh this throughout the throughout the show. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm gonna follow along with it. It's, it's really only one match I cared about watching, and that was the match that happened first. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you. This card, I looked at the it's, card this morning because I was like, should I watch deep. it? It's fifteen, it's deep, 15 matches, including the pre-show. Um, that that's crazy. Free show have four matches, so we got an eleven match card. I remember wrestling fans were like up in up in arms about WrestleMania being too having too many matches. And, and it's the thing is, it's like, and I will say this is worse because like all these matches go long, right? And, and there's no filler. The, and it's like I could see if they only did it on shows like All Out because All Out is basically like their their mania, their big show. But every show was like this. Bad. They started like seven for the pre-show. They don't finish till like twelve thirty, almost one o'clock at night. That's every single pay-per-view because they don't have monthly pay-per-views. They have like every couple months they have a pay-per-view, and every single one is like that. So I thought every episode of Dynamite was pay-per-view quality. Oh, <laughs> well, that was what I seen on Twitter. Yeah, it was the greatest thing ever. Every single Wednesday night. Yeah. Supposedly, y'all wrestling fans good with the hyper bowl because WWE get a lot of positive hyper bowl nowadays too, and it's kind of sick. Like, calm the fuck down. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I seen I, a I, I seen a take earlier about Gunther being the best Intercontinental Champion of all time. Like, hold on, I right. saw that too. I saw that too. Like, it's been like three down, months, bro. bro. Like, Could he be? Like, yeah. But I want to say potential is always there when you have a talent like that with a title that's been dormant for how what two plus years right i get it you but, say oh he turned into the workman's title again and so did seth rollins and nobody was saying he was the greatest of all time I, and that was only four years ago man seth rollins was main event and more than the world champion was. right it was really good so how soon was we that forget? energy 
Where was that energy? Uh, wrestling fans, you niggas love being prisoners of the moment. Calm down. Just calm Seth, down, Seth was, bro. Seth was holding 2018 down. Y'all should was, y'all didn't show bro. him no love, and then y'all turned on him when the fiend showed up. Like y'all earned that heel turn. Y'all really did. Yeah. More on so Seth everybody, Rollins later. Every everybody that says he's annoying, they can't stand him right now. You earned this. You deserve every bit of this because you did facts. it to yourself. Big facts. No, this is a slowdown on the Hyper Bowl. We get a little too excited sometimes when the stuff we like, especially now because, like, the energy is different. I don't think anything mm-hmm. fundamentally is has changed with how WWE is ran on screen. No. But it's, it's a little, I mean, it's a little, you know, nooks and crannies, little changes there. You can see, like, obviously somebody else has a finger on the button. But, yeah, like, yeah. I mean – as far as how to, you know, how the machine functions, they're not going to change that. There's no reason to. Yeah, exactly. And that, Y'all act and like that, every, that, that's... every little thing, though, bro. Like, most folks be getting so excited over everything, bro. Like, right. calm your ass is down. And, it's, and it's, that's the thing, like, that's part of what, what Triple H was talking about, too, in the interview. It was like, it's not so much that, you know, I want to go back and try to change the wheel and reinvent it and stuff like that. It's just like, no, I, if this story made sense, if I see that this person works in this role, I'm going to bring him in and put him there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like with people that with people that, that came back, like all these, all these names that he's been bringing back, stuff like that. It's like, no, it's not just for the fact of, you know, I just want to, to bring back these people. No, like I see they have talent. I see they're good workers. I see that they can fit a role on tv that i, I want to fill because we got three hours to work with on monday and two on on friday then i'm gonna put them there like it's really that simple i mean you got a car right the car gonna run the same way regardless of who driving it it's just like you know it, it's gonna go different yeah. speeds it's gonna function different exactly but it's right. still the, the car it's still run the same way it just exactly Let's talk more about that, though, man. We got Clash at the Castle, Saturday morning pay-per-views. Uh, I mean, I ain't going to say I can get used to it because I can't. <laughs> it was different. It was kind of difficult for me to work and follow along with the show at the same time. Mm-hmm. But uh, I did it, and uh, it was a cool little show. Like, I mean, I, the reason why I'm not going to complain, because people in the U.K. have to stay up and watch pay-per-views at, like, 2 in the morning. At the regular times that they come. Facts. So, I mean, we can wake up on a Saturday morning and watch them. And then y'all y'all save me from watching Nebraska play like shit for the first three quarters of the game. Oh, man. Ooh. But y'all, y'all won that game, though, right? Yeah, we pulled away in the fourth. because. Uh, okay. So, yeah, so I didn't watch the first half, so I don't really know exactly what happened. But apparently the play calling was, was off. And then, uh, you know, last week's pen of the week, Scott Frost – Apparently took over the play call in uh, in the second half, and uh, they were they looked a whole lot better. So imagine the man can imagine call that. plays; it's just certain other things he just needs to work on. We know he can call plays. We see him; we seen him do it at other schools. So like, like we know he got a bag. He got a bag for real. It's just like, how do you utilize that bag with what you got? So I really appreciate WWE for scheduling the show. That uh, took my attention away from that game for a little bit. <laughs> if I had to watch that whole game, I would have been upset, boy. Oh man, <laughs> they would. I would have had a heart attack. I would have. I would have had an attitude at work. All that. Mm-mm. North Dakota. It was North Dakota. Like, we sh- you shouldn't be struggling with North Dakota after three quarters. Uh, but class at the castle. Let's, let's get into it. My bad. <laughs> You know, you be triggered when your when your when your football team is trash. Practically, your whole your whole existence of being a fan. I wasn't a fan last, when they were good. Last last night was a struggle for me yeah. too. Like, I seen. Uh, yeah, I, I I didn't know Notre Dame was like that. Not not Notre Dame now. No. <laughs> since Manti Teo. Right. Let's talk more about Manti Teo in a little bit, man. I, I know, I, I know, y'all seen that Netflix documentary. Oh boy! But uh, let's start with this show, man. Damage Control kicking off the first match. Uh, I didn't watch the the kickoff show, so I have no idea what went down. Uh, I reluctantly like Mad did, Cat man. Moss and Street Profits yeah. versus uh, Austin Theory and who? 
was it Alpha uh, Academy? Alpha Academy, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Austin got his first name back officially. Yeah. Now, so more yeah, Austin it, theory later on. Yeah. But uh we have this uh first uh first official match. Uh we had the six woman tag match, and uh we knew that was gonna be live, and it was. So I'm giving it an A. But uh damage control, they uh they beat Bianca Belair, Alexa Bliss, and Oscar Bailey pinning Bianca Belair. Mm-hmm. That was a that was a decision, and uh, you know I shouldn't be surprised, man. It's Triple H. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see Bianca win when it mattered a lot when Triple H was was, was booking. Let's not make yeah. it a habit. Yeah, because it was I a habit that. in NXT. So let's not make it a habit. <laughs> I, I I agree with that, but I mean, you you say this all the time, like the the heels are king. When Triple H is running the show, yep. so I mean that that foreshadowing t- tells me a lot. Uh, I'm giving it a day two though. Like I, I didn't expect them to get this much time when they opened the show because I look back, I'm like, damn, they got about 30 minutes doing this. But that's great. Like you right. want you want to show, especially on a, a global in a global. I said the woman won't go get time for some reason when they exactly. been time for years. And- Okay. Yeah, that's that's a, that's another that's another just, just cuz they don't, they don't want to give them time nowhere else. That, that don't mean that's what I'm one, saying like the, one of the two one of the only two companies that are giving equal time to men and women. Yeah. We and almost exclusively, almost exclusively white ain't one of them. Um yeah. yeah, that that's one of the narratives that y'all wanted to bring like the, the WWE can't book the women right, but they were booked pretty damn well on this show to start it off. Um, but yeah, like I said, that, uh, that foreshadowing just tells us where we're going and, uh, they have unfinished business. So I'm looking forward to that. You know, extreme rules is right around the corner. So we, uh, we might, we might get to run back what, what money in the bank was supposed to be last year, or at least close to it. So I'm with it. Yeah. I don't think we can do a high quit match, uh, at this point nah. because it, it wouldn't make sense, but last woman standing, I need that. I wouldn't be mad with that. It's in Philly. I might, I might pull up. Hey. Never oh, Mike! You should already have your <laughs> ticket, bro. Come on now. No, nah, I need that at Extreme Rules, man. I said I need. Yes, sir. I need that. Uh, what's your grade for this match, man? Hey, I'm gonna be A two. Yeah, A's all around. A's all around. Uh, yes, next sir. up, uh, we got a clip of a uh, Tyson Fury and uh, Drew McIntyre backstage, and uh, Tyson Fury is here. He's ringside. Undefeated WWE celebrity. Mm-hmm. That's, that's true. Uh, he, he, un, he not undefeated in boxing, is he? Yeah, he is. Like, is he? Oh, I thought he had one loss. Okay. Yeah, no, that uh, that that first one. He got a draw. Was, uh, he got a draw. draw. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. That's what that is. I I got a. I have opinions on Tyson Fury, but this is not the time or the place. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. I'm not that big of a fan. Uh, oh, I mean, he beat a black dude during Black History Month. Like, <laughs> hey, man, I and then, like, you know, we got our Instagram lynch shortly after that. You know, we, uh, got bad memories, yeah, man. He made me yeah, look it was, bad, it was embarrassing. Like, I, I was, I was, I was all for the black dude, and yeah, shout out to Wilder. Though. It, it wasn't so much that he lost, it was the way he lost that just like very embarrassing, damn dog. And then, then the page getting lynched. It was a dark time for 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 this this podcast. And it was it was this it channel. Was. Yeah, uh, heavyweight boxing. Tyson Fury. Shout out the uh, Andy Ruiz and Luis Ortiz. I'm gonna have to watch that one too. That's a, that's a bad I'm, I'm 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 intrigued by that. I'm not gonna have to see what that's hitting on. Uh, but uh, yeah, they ringside. Uh, so is Bret Hart. Uh, they honored him <laughs> for uh, the match with a uh, British Bulldog at SummerSlam 30 years ago. So he was there, I think yeah, with like his daughter sense. and some other dude. And it was this girl that was behind Bret Hart, very noticeable because like she was covering her nose. So I wonder if somebody in her area was musty. Was Bret Hart oh. musty? Oh man, imagine. Like that, that would just be perfect. Let me find out Bret Hart was musty out here. <laughs> go back and watch this. The, go back and watch Bret Hart 
when they showed him ringside. There's this girl that's that's like directly behind him. So either Bret Hart farted or somebody around her was musty. And she's literally covering the hell out of her nose like badly. Like, I thought like I thought at first she was like sneezing or something, but she held it. It was very noticeable. I didn't even really I, I, notice Bret Hart for a while because I was looking I at can, her the whole time. I can speak to I officially now can speak to the wrestling fans being musty. I told you about the show I went to yeah. back in like May. Confession. Yeah. I got a confession. Uh oh. Um, I, I, I wear deodorant, I shower and everything. I accidentally was that fan at Money in the Bank. Uh, cause I had, a, <laughs> listen, listen, y'all seen what I was wearing, right? I had a whole ass suit on and it's 110 degrees outside. I was, I was, I was a little tart. So I, I, I kept my arms down as much as possible. Oh man. It's just a little tart. Oh. It wasn't, it wasn't bad. Like it wasn't like SpongeBob in the movie hey. theater type shit. Hey, if nobody mentioned it. It didn't happen. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't happen. <laughs> and and the way we were sitting was like bumping elbows. So like, yeah, they, at that point they ain't even paying attention. So right. good. It was a good show. Uh, we digressing a lot. My apologies. Uh, let's, let's let's get back into this. We hype. This is this is Sunday. It's it's a holiday tomorrow. It's, it's hype. We don't got uh, to work tomorrow, man. Like, yeah, yeah, chilling. I knew Reek, he had a I I didn't see him. I ain't seen him drink from it since we started recording, but he had a little drinky drink. I, I killed I killed this. This is gone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we lit. Uh yeah, yeah, we but good. we here. Intercontinental Championship. Uh we had a Sheamus came out with his boys and then uh you know and then Gunther. Gunther the ring general. Uh we had, you know, big meaty <laughs> man slapping me. You know what it is. A plus 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 for me. This uh it was expected to be great. And it hit all expectations. Uh what did not hit my expectations was uh Imperium is at full strength again. Uh Giovanni Vinci is back with his boys. And uh I, I, I am a little bit uh because I, I was man. really I was really enjoying the uh the Playboy Giovanni gimmick out there at NXT. I- I thought it had a lot of potential that it uh it did not get to reach uh if this is not a one time thing, which is it, not looking like it is. No, nah, he's he's thing. if if you look on the page, he's on SmackDown's roster right now. So yeah. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then like, you know, we got Butch seemingly uh doing a slow revert back to, to Bruiserweight Pete Dunn. I'm not a fan of it. Cause I feel like we caving in to to what the these motherfuckers on Twitter want. And it's like Look, I, I liked Imperium, and I liked Pete Dunn. I I was invested in them, but like recently with these rehauls, they they didn't really have much of a character to me outside of like we wrestle good. Now they they've had they still have these you know the same skills in ring, but they have a little bit of a character to them that I've gotten an emotional investment in, and now all that is seeming you know is gone. Like apparently, everything that I got invested in over the past few months is just reverted back to them doing the same shit that they've been doing for the last five years, which is just, I wrestle good. And that's fine. Like they still good. I still enjoy them, but like, I'm, I'm big on character work. I've always been, I started watching in the attitude area. So like, yeah. I'm going to be a stickler for character work over the in-ring stuff. The in-ring stuff to me is just a bonus. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I, I can agree. Like I, I was really into the Giovanni Vinci character. Um, and I, I was starting to come around on Butch, honestly, because like it, it's like you said, they they're giving some depth to the character. Um, they still the same. They still wrestle the same. Like, yeah, that's I, my I thing. Like, I, 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 I so never much. understood the big deal. Everybody is like, oh, they, because his name is different. He, he's still the yeah. same wrestler. Like, he wrestles the same exact way. It's actually better because he's more over. Like, yeah, Money in the Bank. It was a bunch of people like literally sitting at the ceiling, but they had, you know, they had five pieces of paper spelling out the word butch. And then when he came out in the main event, <laughs> they raised that shit up. So like yeah, like I don't so much mind if they like revert back to some continuity with them. Like, okay, you give you give Pete his gear back and you make him look more like 
you know, Pete Dunn that we remember, but you still call him Bush. That's cool. I, I don't mind that. And if Giovanni Vinci can still at least like, make him dress the same outside the ring, though. Yeah, like, I like yeah, the like gear, he, bro. He can he can be you know he can keep his when he's not wrestling he can still be like the, the same you know the, the Brawl and Bruce. But he didn't even have that crew. Him and Rich Holland were dressed like waiters last night. Oh man, yeah, that's true. Like, that's true. That would be crazy. <laughs> Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, this must be how NXT fans felt when their favorite wrestlers got called up to be with Vince McMahon. Oof. Like everything that they got invested in is just slowly stripped away. Pretty much. Because, I mean, only a select few out of NXT got to keep, you know, their their gimmick and not just their name, the, the the entire nature of their character, like Kevin Enzo. Owens, Sami Zayn, Neville, when he was there, Enzo, Enzo and Cass, Cass. Yeah. Uh, Asuka. Yeah, like, only a select few of them got to get called up with that intact and then keep it all the way up to this point. Because they either had it when they came up and – it got changed over time, or they didn't even get it when they came up to main roster. They were just a yeah. different person with a different name, different different gimmick. Like Sandy. Yeah, that was wasted, man. It was, was mid to me. I didn't want to see too though. Outside of Nikki, I, I, I saw I, I saw the potential that they had as a group, but I couldn't then, just know, because it was Eric Young. This dude held a women's title on TNT. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. Get it. <laughs> I couldn't get it behind. Him. <laughs> I, st- I still can't get behind Eric Young now. He he lead another faction in, in Impact right now, and I just oh, whenever they on the screen, I tune out. Mm-mm. Shout out to Joe Doran though, man. Get well soon. Facts. Uh, but nah, uh, elsewhere in this, let me finish up with this match, man. Uh, Sheamus, woo, he got his ass slap snacks. He got cooked. Adrian, you didn't go down like that, huh? He got cooked. I ain't never seen him get cooked like that before. Oh my god! Like, I never flinched that much watching the match before. Nah, and I, I, I've seen some shit, but I mean, the chops, the the kicks to the head. I mean, just everything. Hey, he hit everything. the cross on that nigga though, man. Yeah, man. <sighs> now nah, they beat I, I just, out of each other, but Sheamus was getting cooked like crazy. He was getting cooked. I ain't never seen dude get his ass beat like that. Nah. And the crowd gave him his flowers after the match, man. As and they should well have. Deserved. Well deserved. Well deserved. And I said, I said this in the chat. I said, let another motherfucker call Sheamus mid at best again. I'm waiting. Let another one of y'all try to tell me. This is what I was mid. talking about back then when it first <laughs> happened. Like, bro, Sheamus is that dude for real. And like nice. you don't you don't realize Sheamus is that dude until you sit down. And realize Sheamus is that dude. Like 13 years. He he's been around 13 years. It don't mm-hmm. seem like it. But I mean, he, he got he won championship off from a grand slam. This dude then did everything except win the intercontinental title. The only other person more decorated than Sheamus is Edge. Yeah. Sheamus has won everything he could possibly win except the intercontinental title. Money in the bank, Royal Rumble, Rumble. King of the Ring. Yeah. Only yeah. other person to have all that is Edge. Mm-hmm. See, that even Brock, King of the Rock Lesnar, but like Brock Lesnar ain't won nothing but a world title, so I can't even put him up there. Yeah. Well, he's won. He's won a Rumble. He's won Money in the Bank. King of the Ring. King of the Ring. He won world he never, titles. No, nope. never won he any won, other championship. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't do mid card tag team. None of that. He was just like, just give me world titles. <laughs> That's it. You know what I want. Nah, hey, uh, how how much would you have to receive in uh in United States dollars to get one of them chops from Gunther? Oh man, um, I said a hundred thousand minimum. I might have to slide in a million, like million because I'm greedy. I'm just I'm, I'm listen. I'm factoring the medical bills because my chest gonna be caved in on some shit. Like true. I, I I don't have that big a chest as it is. Like I've been working on it, but like it's not that big. So uh, I'm thinking about like what I'm gonna have to deal. I'm gonna be Kofi after after he, he hit me in my <laughs> chest. Facts. So I gotta factor that in, you know what I'm saying? But uh I don't hey, know, man. like 
I got a little cushion. So I think like, mean, like I might be get one. At, at, at least five hundred. At least five hundred. Like I won't say the I won't say the, say the whole meal, but at least five hundred. You know, and you know what? We can call it even there. You got something. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a listen. I did say uh a hundred thousand, but now I think uh I think I'm about to raise that to like a quarter million. Cause like you, you convinced me. You convinced me because because we talking, because we talking like if we gonna we gonna ask for that, like we talking full swing, like he gonna wind up in crack, motherfucker. <laughs> so hey. so I, I want to top dollar for price that. It's not today's price. Hey, Amen. Yesterday's price Talk was hundred thousand. To today's price is, is, is quarter million. Talk to him. What young Jesus right. say? A quarter million. Right, man. Hey. You right, you right. Uh, next match. <laughs> oh, next up, actually, we had a uh, Leon Edwards is ringside. Remind mm-hmm. me what what title do Leon Edwards hold? I do not know. I don't so, really follow you. What, what, welterweight, welterweight title. He just okay. last weekend uh, beat Kamaru Usman yep. with that 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 kick out of nowhere, shocking the world. Mm-hmm. Did not expect that to happen. He but, was uh, ringside. I seen he was. He think he's slick being in a locker room with Liv Morgan. You ain't slick, bro. <laughs> y'all was in the locker room. It was just y'all and the cameraman. Yeah. It was just, yeah. it was just y'all and a cameraman, son. You don't find that suspicious. You don't find that suspicious. I do, sir. Sir. Oh, I, I, I get, I get Seamus and Gunther A plus 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 two. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Some, some slap snacks, man, for all that time. Beautiful. Bumping me, bumping me. This is uh, all I asked for. All I asked for was just put the IC title back on pay per views where it's supposed to be and spotlight it correctly, and they exceeded that. So yeah, facts. Gotta get through. Uh, but uh, speaking of Liv Morgan, we have Liv Morgan versus Shayna Baszler for the SmackDown Women's Title, and uh, yeah, we're not really feeling it. I'm gonna give it a C. I wasn't feeling it, um, mainly because I, I I thought Shayna was gonna get the dub. I think it's it's about time for Shayna to get the dub and Triple H with the book. I thought she was. I thought he was going, you know, just put it on her, you know, put that shit on and then, you know, do how we do. But uh, nah, live, live one again. Yeah. C. I'm going to give it a C. It's like, it's just, yeah, I'm being nice. I'm being nice. With I'm, I'm giving a whole F. And it's not even because the quality of the match. No, the match is okay. It's just a result. I I have been on this. I've been on this for I don't know how long, and it's like we know y'all tapped in, but you're not listening. Okay. <laughs> I only ask for one thing, one thing, and one thing only. And it's like y'all keep teasing me, going in the direction of what I want, because we don't have like happy go, you know, tag team Shayna. And you know, stupid comedy act, Shayna. This is real deal. Whoop your ass and leave, Shayna. And the fact of the matter is, Shayna has not held the title in WWE. Let me check my notes here. Since May of 2021, and that was a, a, the title. women's tag titles that y'all vacated and forgot about for several months. So. This was supposed to be the, the the right the reset in the right direction. I get it. You don't want to have live as a pushover champion. You want to create a good baby face that you know you, your fans can get behind. You want to create that nice underdog story. I get it. She would have still had that, that already, but but it, she would have still had that in a loss. Especially the way she was like still staying alive and still kicking out and stuff like that. She was fighting. She was telling the right story. So she could have taken that loss and not and not had a second of that 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 goodwill built up taken away. Yeah. But, but y'all said no, no, we're gonna definitively have her beat Shayna by breaking her down and then hitting her. Fin- Mind you, this will piss me off. She hit the finisher. She sure did. And last week. They were literally WWE on their social media posted video of her practicing with Ronda, all the counters to that move. She literally said, 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 look, this is her finisher. Boom. This is how you counter it. 
step by step, she went over with her, like, okay, she's going to do this. So then this is what you do. You move out the way, catch her in the headlock. She practiced that with her like at least three times, went over with her. So she did all that practicing with you, and you still got hit with it. Nah, man. Nah, F. F minus. I'm pissed off. I'm sick of this. It's garbage. I don't accept it. It's true. It's true. You know what? I'm going to give it a D. Now she said it. <laughs> I'm going to change my grade to a D. Because like, I'm looking at Liv Morgan, and I think like it's a similar situation like with Braun Breaker. Like, Braun Breaker had some really weak opponents during his reign. Like, Liv, ha- Liv hasn't had weak opponents, but she's had opponents. Like, it's, it's more so the opposite. Like, Braun is so much better than his opponents that he's been facing. Whereas, like, Liv is clearly inferior to Ronda Rousey. She's clearly inferior to Shayna Baszler. So, like, she's the underdog and, like, the opponents don't work out for her. I think, like, you know, you put Liv up against, like, Rhea Ripley's or Bianca Belair's or, you know, Alexa Bliss's and Oscar's. Like, I think you get a better result versus somebody who should just be dominating the fuck out of her. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, now, that I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, because I, I want to give a, a shout-out to Ronda Rousey and Adam Pierce for some entertaining television. Uh, <laughs> now that now that that is done, I can see Ronda Rousey getting her title back from, from Liv at this point. Like That's probably where they're going with it. If Shayna didn't do it. And then, you know, we got, you know, Ronda and Shayna in the back pocket. But uh, I will I will take it. I really yeah. will. I ain't mad at it. I mean, this the more I anyway. think about it, the more I think about it, I would rather it come to the two of them facing each other and Shayna taking the title off of Ronda as opposed to Ronda taking it off of Shayna. Yeah. Because we don't need Shayna taking that kind of loss. No. no. But as bad as we've already done her as it is, let's not do that. Ronda can take any loss in WWE at this point and still come out and be a draw. Like, it's not a question. Shout out to Adam Pierce, man. He he turned to a nigga. Real oh, quick. man. <laughs> Where was this? Where was this energy two years ago? I just want to know. Where is this like, energy? Like you didn't have the energy for Roman. You got no the energy way. for a woman, though. That's crazy. That's oh crazy. You got goodness. the energy for a woman, but you don't got it for another man. Like, you, oh, I wish I thought about. I just thought about that now. You had the energy for another dude. You had the energy for Roman. You you Roman called you a pussy. For real though, he called you a pussy on Fox. Roman was sunning you on national TV on, on the Fox. Bro. And bad. you ain't do nothing about it. it was oh, bad. but Rhonda, Rhonda get in your face. You call her a bitch. That's crazy. You, you got all this, you got all the balls in the world for another woman. And she still Yo. whooped your ass. That's crazy. Yo. Oh, oh Adam <laughs> Pierce. This is what I've been talking about. See, Adam Pierce showed y'all his true colors that I've been talking about. The whole entirety of the existence of this show. I've been saying it. Mm. He is he's all right, but he's not real. Yeah, he's one of the most decorated NWA champions ever. He's a great in-ring mm-hmm. technician. He, he he had a slight nigga moment almost. He said, he said, hell no. <laughs> Yo, for real. Hell no. No, he didn't say hell no. He said hell no with a W. Right, like, okay, so 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 scrap that. He's alive in there somewhere. You just you just don't got the energy for your peers, your, right. your male peers. Yeah. But uh, uh, all right. Anyway, good to know. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, let's check back in on All Out, shall we? Uh, and a surprise to no one, uh, the Elite booked themselves to win another championship. Ugh. Oh, I'm it's a sorry. surprise to nobody. Jade retained. TBS yeah, we knew that was She came out. Three she came out. She came out decked out like She Hulk. I need that. Hey, like She Hulk. She got the. She got the green paint on and everything. I'm with it. I said I need. Mm-hmm. And then uh, right now I'm watching Survivor Series 2014. Just came on. Auto play. Mm-hmm. The main event. The Alliance baby. versus Team. Yeah. You know. Stop. Soul Survivor. Oh. 
Well, we hey, let's table that I'm for a, another. <laughs> yeah, that that is gonna be. I, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm really going to have like a deep dive on how they failed my guy for hey. over a decade now. I, I got. I gotta. We we gonna put that in the schedule what somewhere. To that boy. It's not even gonna be that. It's not even gonna be that. I'm just gonna be like, where did we go wrong? Because we had the formula. We really did. Yeah, I, I want to know too. I want to know too. Uh, next up, next match we had on the card, man. Uh, former, former, uh, what are they? Raw SmackDown. Raw. It's the Raw Tag Championships. Former Raw Tag Team Champions Edge and Rey Mysterio. Uh, they yeah. were the second ever Raw Tag Team Champions it's in the record book. Uh, they defeated the Judgment Day. A minus. <laughs> a minus for this one. Uh, I could have gave it an A, but I gave it an A minus. Because Edge. It's too damn tall to be trying to do the six one nine. Nobody yeah, that, that, that's to attempt that move. Dominic that, that, already that, struggles. That made me dock it a little bit because uh, Dominic's like six one. Edge is six five. Yeah. yeah, you can't be doing that, bro. Nah, the 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 six one nine has a, a height requirement. Yeah, a height limit. <laughs> yeah. Like you a Hall of Famer, bro. You don't you don't do that. Right. <laughs> you don't do that from style points. Right. Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, good match, good match. And uh, afterwards, uh, you know, the, one of the things we knew in the words of Avery Bradley, uh, that's former NWA champion with the Los Angeles Lakers, Avery Bradley. Uh, y'all knew what was going to happen. Mm. Dominic turned on both of them. Oh. Kicked the edge in the nuts, clothesline the shit out of Ray. Woo-hoo. You know, Ray was like, hey, you better, you better fucking, you better do it. And he did it. Laid the shit out his uh his adopted father. I want to say like that's Eddie's son. Yeah, <laughs> in case y'all forgot, Ray got his ass beat by a father and son duo. Oh man, decades apart. Uh, Ray Mysterio going for that repeat award, man. Yeah, got got to have. I'm gonna just let y'all know right now. He's he's gonna win it. It's just not gonna be official for another three months. But you know how <laughs> terrible you gotta be for your kids to turn on you. Yeah. Like we get like this somebody if if Young Kings wrestling existed back in 1999, Vince McMahon would have won the Worst Father Award because his kids oh, turned man. on him in 1999. You know how terrible you got to be. Vince McMahon, as we know, is is a terrible person. Oh, this yeah. is a sick Negro. Vince- so when your <laughs> kids turn on you, you automatically the worst father ever because how your own kids don't fuck with you. This is the only father in in wrestling history to have had no disqualification matches against both of his children. Yet an I quit match with Steph. Like, I quit match with his daughter, a street fight with his son. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta be a terrible person for your kids just to be like, yo, fuck you. I seen a, I see, <laughs> I see something earlier. Uh, it was a, you know, we talked about it last week. Uh, Ray Mysterio and his family uh, took on The Miz and his family on Celebrity Family Feud. Mm, yeah. So uh, apparently the Mysterios won. Uh, I got spoiled on that, but mm-hmm. uh, they said Dominic turned on Ray because he chose Aaliyah to play Fast Money with instead of him. <laughs> that was the that was the final straw right there. He said After everything that, else that done happened. <laughs> so you don't think I'm smart? Is what you saying? Like you choose my baby sister over me? He said Dominic, mm-hmm. Mijo, it's all right, Mijo. Before I get yeah, into, you know, getting getting controversial, I'm going to stop my uh, my Spanish impersonation. And just <laughs> next, match. Uh, next match, uh, we have uh, Elton John defeated Patrick Starr. And uh, I'm going to give this one an extra grade for the negativity on this past Monday. So I, I gave it an A, but I'm going to give it an A plus just because Seth, Seth ethered this man, he cooked this man. He said... <laughs> I don't remember exactly what he said. He said <laughs> I, I got it. I got it. So he said because yeah, I watched it. it. I watched it like fifty said, times. Uh, you brought up. I couldn't family. help it. Yeah, he said so. Uh, let's I will talk bring about up your family. family, but oh, you don't have a family because your wife divorced your bitch ass and took the kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The wife, the, the wife divorced you, took the kids. They won't see your bitch ass no more. What'd you say, bro? You heard me, little bitch. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna fuck you up, bro. Where you at? I'm right here. Oh. I'm here in the arena right now. Come see me, you little bitch. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck you up. 
and they fought mm. again. Mm-mm-mm. They got into it, but yeah, this man uh, came out in a blood feud wearing uh wearing Patrick Star shorts. Yeah, I, that 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 sent me. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you, you, it shows you how how serious you're taking this, bro. bro. I knew he was losing right then. I was like, damn, this nigga about to lose. He, Lo and he behold, he did. <laughs> and, and that's what I said. That's what I said on the predictions. I'm like, listen, as much as I'm sure they're trying to progress this story along, I. I I can't see a scenario where Seth loses after all that. And then this was before the the segment where they like they basically reenacted John Jones and Daniel Cormier from yeah. like back in what was it 2013 or something like that. That uh that 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 interview on Fox. They basically recreated that. And this was before Triple H is a big UFC guy. So you, you Oh yeah. You thought Triple H was was big on the callbacks, like mm-hmm. wrestling callbacks. He listen, this dude. We're gonna see some boxing callbacks soon. We're gonna have a Floyd Mayweather character here soon. You know Triple H is on the money team, if you remember correctly. Oh shit. Y'all, I y'all definitely remember. forgot about yo, I definitely forgot about that. What, what fight was that he came out with? Them? Uh damn. This was it had to be like 2013. So maybe like Robert Guerrero. It wasn't Robert Guerrero. Nah, it might have been my Donna. Nah, it it had to be my Donna or uh or maybe Kodo. Maybe was it Canelo. It oh, we gotta Google this. We gotta because I, I remember because I, I watched that fight. I did too, and I I, I watched a lot of Floyd. I remember fights, I seen him. I was like, "What is, what is Triple H doing with Justin Bieber?" It was my right, initial right, fight. yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, uh, it, it, it had to be like, it had to be like. I feel like it was like Kodo or somebody. It was Kodo. It was, it was okay, Kodo. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was one of them good ones. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, that 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 that's coming. That's coming. I gotta yeah. watch out for it. Hey, Trick Williams. Listen, I I'm I'm for it because Trick Trick is not getting enough attention because he's nah, next to he with Mello. He he's next. To, you need, know, I, I'm, I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna save my energy on that for for when we get to it. Yeah, but, we got a lot to still get through. So let's yeah. let's, let's speed it. Uh, I get a one more, one B more plus thing. B plus to this man. B plus, okay. Uh, one more thing about this. I feel like if this is really a blood feud like it has been, we need a gimmick match. We got Extreme Rules coming up. End it there. It's probably going to happen. Street fight or something like, you know. Uh, yeah. That's all I got. Uh, and then Unfortunately, the main event, he's probably going to win on that. But like, What's uh, unfortunate? Uh, Riddle probably going to win if they if it, uh, if it becomes man. a gimmick match. But. It's not unfortunate for me. I, I, like I, I don't, I don't want to see Seth lose no more. And not to this bozo. He, he won He won last night. It's all good. Yeah. Like, he but won. Then, you know. <sighs> I, just, I, I just don't want to see it. I just don't want to see it happen. It is what it is, man. Uh, but in our main event, man, Roman Reigns, the tribal chief, the head of the table, the one, oops, uh, defeated Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre, the chosen one, came out the mm-hmm. broken dreams. Yes. Like, I think, like, we had to do it. Yeah, we, we all wanted it and we all, like, was hoping they did it. And I had a feeling they would at least, you know, play broken dreams first and then he, you know, plays regular music, which they did. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm glad. Cause, uh, I was, I was like, you can't, you can't play that, that, that video. Not in the that you UK. Had. Yeah, you can't sit up there and do that whole, that, that little video that they played. You know, a couple days before, right? You can't tease us like that and not play it on the show. Like, that's Facts. you would have had a riot on your hands. Facts. And uh, as this is a Roman Reigns match on a premium live event, you already know the default grade a plus 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 plus. I'm gonna add a couple more pluses because the match itself was fantastic like, four pluses. Like, hell yeah, whew, y'all, y'all really had me, bro. Like, I thought it was, I thought it was the end. I thought it was over multiple times because, like, going into the match, I, I'm thinking, like, they was going to do it. Like, and then after the match, I was like, I'm glad they didn't do it because, all right, you got a moment. Cool. You still got, you still got a whole mug, you know, other stories to tell that you're just going to negate the hat, you know, the fact that you got these other stories to tell because you want to create a moment. And it's like, that's that's not smart. That's how we get lackluster title reigns like Hangman Page. That's how 
you know, we get title reigns that are hard to follow up on, like Kofi Kingston. You know what I mean? Because, like, the moment's already passed. So, like, what are you going to do next? Yeah. Well, and the only the thing I can say – with Drew. Yeah, the only thing I can say is that you had a, 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 a storyline that you could transition right into, which was Karrion Cross, And the only way I see that ending, and this is why I agree, is that Cross takes the belt off in first chance. And that's just because that's how Triple H books. It's like, all right, so perfect example, Johnny Gargano. Keep Lee. You know, he he had been another one. He had been building up to winning that title all this time. And the buildup was so great and everyone's so behind it. He finally wins it. First title reign or first title defense out, he loses it to the first challenger. That's what I feel like would have happened here. And I think the the fact that you know, you've put so much stock in Drew and you built him so much that he was your pandemic champion. And to, to as I said last week, that, that y'all been talking about since day one, Drew is that leftover lasagna. Mm-hmm. This was the perfect example of that because how long had he been out the picture and just doing bullshit fuse with like Corbin and stuff like that? And this match already, he looked strong and shit. Like it took a, a whole debut NXT call up and a whole bunch of other bullshit to happen for him to lose because he was nice. getting at Roman. The psychology in this match from the very beginning, it's like Roman just sitting up there, getting out the ring and uh, taking a step back, hesitating. Like, he was shook. He, absolutely, from the jump. And it was like, oh, let's, man. Uh, let's, let's talk more about uh, what happened in this match, man. Uh, Roman Reigns hit the rock bottom. Did not get a finish. So I had to mm. tweet the owner of the rock bottom. <laughs> I said, hey, <laughs> this guy who, uh, who's who been calling you out for the last two years mm-hmm. stole your move, your finishing move, and did not get to finish with it. Mm. So what are you going to do about that? Because <laughs> you know it's about drive. It's about power. Mm-hmm. So what you going to do about it? But, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we get a, you know, you know, you got a main event on a big show and you got Lil Nate, Charles Robinson. If there was a hall of fame for referees, he would be one of the first inductees into it. You know, when he out there, he, he taking a bump. Oh yeah. Every time <laughs> he took a bump. And then here comes Austin theory with the money in the bank briefcase. Oh man. He's about to cash it in. And he, he goes up to, to Samantha Irvin, the timekeeper. And he goes and he tries to let her know what's about to go down. So I'm cashing in. Mm. And next thing you know, there's this guy who I mentioned earlier that I don't really care for, who is a fan, (laughs) even though he's undefeated. He's an undefeated WWE celebrity. He's still a fan. He had a paid ticket. Maybe it was paid for. Maybe it was comp. I don't know. He was there as a fan. (laughs) He wasn't there as a wrestler is my point. Because remember a few weeks ago, uh, Baron Corbin attacked Pat McAfee as a fan. And I said, how are you a fan? They need to have some better security. Because even other fans, even the fan that attacked Seth Rollins, he wasn't even famous. Like, yeah, that's a true. fan attacked that's Austin true. Theory and prevented him from becoming the undisputed universal champion. That fan was Tyson Fury. Mm. Fans keep attacking these stars, and something needs to be done about it. Because not only is the parking lot unsafe, yeah, <laughs> it's unsafe to be ringside. Apparently, uh, mm. anyway, uh, Drew McIntyre. I'm thinking he' about to win it for real. I'm like, damn, here it go. Like, there's no way Roman about to kick out again. No, he wasn't. And somebody pulls Drew McIntyre out the ring. And as soon as I seen, as soon as I seen a figure, I was like. This is what I wanted to happen. My guy, my dude, Solo Sokoa, he follows us on, on Twitter, by the way, because, you hey. know, he lost Vegas, right? Got that Las Vegas connection. I've seen this guy, Solo Sokoa, go from wrestling in a warehouse in front of 60 people. Mm-hmm. Now 60,000 in the stadium. It's crazy. Solo Sokoa is with the bloodline officially. So, you know, yeah. I don't read the rumors. So apparently, like, there was something that said he was on the SmackDown roster anyway. Y'all like spoiling shit. That's why I just well, he, don't. Around. He was getting called up, supposedly. Um, 
it was just the rumor that, that they were saying like he's he's gonna get called up already. Um, they didn't say where or how, but I mean, let, let's be honest. What else was he really gonna do? Um, and I had I had thought about it going into it, and it didn't dawn on me until I noticed that the, Os- the Usos wasn't there. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, they, they can't. Happen. I don't think they can travel out the country, bro. Damn. I know they can't travel in the Canada. That's why they weren't there. Yeah. But no, uh, baby Oos is here. Big shout out to him. It's I'm, time. I'm happy to see. A plus 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 for me. What you got? I got I got same thing. All all the pluses with it. Uh I I actually love the the um thing with Austin Theory getting clocked by Tyson Fury. I mean Yo, the crowd went crazy. It because it was just like it's so out of left field, and it's like it's one of the moments like DJ Paul be wilding. But also at the same time, when you really think about it, it it it, it keeps it keeps Austin looking slightly strong because the end of the day, he got knocked out by the lineal heavyweight champion of the world. Like, <laughs> can't do nothing about that. Um, he he only get he get knocked out by combat sports legends. Yeah, it's the only the only thing stopping him from becoming world champion is is right. legends from other combat sports stopping him before he has the opportunity to. Brock Lesnar whooped his ass before he could at SummerSlam. Tyson Fury, yeah, knocked his ass out. So. Yeah, it ain't like he can, ain't like he's taking else to Hornswoggle or nothing. Right, it's just you know, the big dogs. It's a classic villain um, origin story because I like, I feel like one day he gonna go insane, and I think that's that's what Austin Theory needs. Like the selfie yeah. shit, you've been doing that for the last year or so. Let's let's move on from that. Like you need a you need more of an edge now. Like people don't take you seriously, and and, and they shouldn't. Like that's that's not where the character is. The character yeah. needs to be, like he needs to be respected, you know. Right. And I think he's not getting that respect. We've seen for literally a whole hour on Raw a few weeks back. This man was getting bitched. He got bitched by the bloodline. Got bitched by Drew McIntyre. Got bitched by uh, whoever he fought in the match. I can't remember who they fought. Through it. For yeah, an hour through it. straight. So, you know, you got to toughen up. Yeah. You know what Cameron the said? Big, uh, yeah. You tough, right? Hey, I got it. Um. I got it. Hold on. <laughs> you be all right, nigga. You tough, right? <laughs> hey, yeah. Now the biggest story out of this, though, man. Niggas get pumped baby, out every day, B. Exactly. Biggest story to come out of this, you know, what I'm saying, baby, Uso here. Sammy Zayn, your time is up, big homie. Oh, your yeah. free trial, your free trial period is dead. He about to, he about to pull up. I, you, 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 um, what's 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 that show? Uh, the Eric and Andre joint. No, the, uh, the the Eric and Andre show. <laughs> he about to pull up to the key. <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> it's about to be a dub for you, bro. You gonna go up to the door? It's gonna be locked. Ain't nobody gonna answer, bro. It's all bad. Which might, which Kevin might no be one's told to that nigga. Oh yeah, he, it, it, he, he, if he not a face already, then I don't know. But I know Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, he told you, bro. I told y'all, mm-hmm. niggas. Months ago, too, he said, "Yo, what the fuck you doing, bro?" Yeah, and he's he wasn't trying to people. hear. It. He's a natural people. He nah. he was stoic. Now he about to learn. Yeah, man. So I know Drew. Good, man. Drew seen Solo Sokoa was, was hot. Yeah, it was like, you like, how many of these niggas are already? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> It's more y'all? Where y'all coming from? Oh. Oh, damn, they're like the Wins brothers. Sitting up there, who are these niggas? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Try Tommy Davidson. I thought I had that on the soundboard. Oh. I was looking for it. I don't have it. So. Soundboard might have deleted that too. Raggedy ass. Oh my god. Whatever. Whatever. Uh yeah, that was uh that was Clash of the Castle. Any uh last thoughts on that? No man, it was, it was a great show. Um, you know, it's, it's the the press conference afterwards was pretty entertaining too. Uh, you're gonna see probably some 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 more UK shows 
going forward, or at least oh yeah, they going back shows outside the way. country. Yeah, they go they're gonna be around a lot more. But um, yeah, no, this was this was his first official first official show that it was just all you know under Triple H's watch. Mm-hmm. Now, like this was his 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 thing, and it was good. Like it wasn't bloated. What six matches on this card? Everyone got their, their equal time. Yeah. That's what we needed to see. That's and uh. You know, they had to give us a little appetizer afterwards, some dessert. They had Worlds mm. Collide earlier this afternoon. And uh, we ain't going to spend too much time on this. We, we can get through these grades real quick. Uh, we had five matches, Boy. all championship matches. Uh, we kicked mm-hmm. it off. Shawn Michaels was a fool for kicking off with the best match of the night. Uh, Carmelo Hayes put Ricochet's jersey up in the rafters. Ran back. And uh, defended the North American Championship successfully. I'm gonna give it an A for the A champ because the A champ he don't miss. I love the uh, the double the double springboard stunner spot. That was that was fun, bro. Like that was probably my favorite spot. Ricochet, like Ricochet going through all his greatest hits and Melo just matching him yeah. like step for step, bro. Like listen, if if 20, uh, 2024. WrestleMania 41. If my guy is not in the main event, I don't want to watch it. Like, <laughs> I, I like said it before. So before we even before we even got in the ring, he was just doing the entrance. I'm like, you got to give my guy everything. Like, I've never seen uh, a talent that just like he he comes out and you see him, and it's like he got the entire package. He has everything. Man. That you need in a superstar, so I there are not enough pluses to give to this match. I said it from the jump. Nothing's going to beat this. I a I plus. wasn't that invested in the main event from the beginning, you know what I'm saying. But once I saw this, I'm like, I knew it was going to be dope as soon as they announced it. But like, as soon as I heard that that Ricochet music on Tuesday, I was like, oh shit, here we go. Yeah, and man. Shawn Michaels somehow to maybe book the best card of the weekend. On yeah, the man. Like, uh, no, nothing beating that. Nothing. Hey, shout out to Carmelo. Uh, I got I got a comment on him later on, but uh, let's uh, let's get through the next match uh, for the uh, for the unification of the NXT and NXT UK Tag Championships. NXT champions the Creed Brothers, NXT UK champions uh, Briggs and Jensen uh, versus uh, Gallus and Pretty Deadly in a four way elimination match. I like I called all four of these teams last week before the match was made official. Thought it might be, you know, have a little fun with it, be like a ladder match or something, but I don't know. I guess they said no to that. But uh, it was still, it was still all right. Uh, I'm gonna give it a B though. It wasn't, it wasn't like amazing, but it was cool. It was dope. Uh, before, before the show itself, uh, Roger Strong got. I ain't gonna play the sound bite that he got his ass cooked because, like, I thought he was dead. Um, it's like this man was. <laughs> I thought he was. Yeah, dead. It was like, is he alive? Uh, so I'm thinking whole time like, man, this dude done went through all the trouble to to fake attack himself, trying to do Roger Strong gaslighting things. Uh, come to yeah. find out, this whole time, you know how I felt when I seen I seen like Damon Kemp came in, and he was like disguised and shit, and I was like, as soon as I seen him, I was like, it was this nigga the entire time. I felt like Hank Schrader sitting on a toilet. I was like, yo, <laughs> this whole time it's been this nigga. And they thought it was Roddy. I thought Roddy was being a piece of shit. And if uh, Uncle Ruckus, don't trust them new niggas over there. Cause they get the one black dude. <laughs> and he probably trying to avenge Stokely like, Yo, what happened to my nigga Stokely? Where'd he go? Oh, man, that's crazy. So now I had to infiltrate for the brotherhood. That's how I'm looking at it. Put a Kente cloth on my nigga Damon Kemp right now. <laughs> uh, honestly, for initially, that was my first thought, too. But then I'm like, you know what? Roddy ain't smart enough to, to try to put out a head on himself like that. He was never a made guy. He was never a top guy in them groups. Yeah. This, ain't, this ain't him. So then I'm like, who else would it be? And then... As they were coming out backstage to to walk out to the to to the for the match, and he's talking, I'm like, something looks sketchy about that nigga. He might not be the one, but I feel like he in on it. And then sure enough, 
He was the one that did it. But um, honestly, I'm bumping this up to an A, and it's because of two words. Julius Creed. Ooh. That dude is I, – I don't know what to say no more. Like, I, I wasn't that hyped for the Creeds initially when they first came out, but it's like – I just keep watching them week it after week. It took me like two dude, weeks to, to get on the Creed bandwagon, but Julius, uh, yeah, man, and like and it makes sense because like I found out that uh, it, I was I was looking some every now and again I like to go look at like old performance center recruits uh, when mm-hmm. they first got signed, the little you know the yeah. you know the photo shoot that they that they put online, and I right, like yeah. to go and look through them and see like who's still around and like what characters are like you know how how they've progressed. And uh, I, I seen the class that uh, that uh, what's his name Brutus Brutus Creed was in, and uh, they introduced him and stuff. And it was like his brother was signed to the Performance Center like six months ago. And I was like, that's why his brother seems to be so much better right now because he's been there longer, and it, yeah. it, it and it shows. But like, yeah, shout out to the Creeds. They they the truth. They they oh, they yeah. Hemothy and Hemothy too. They really is man. Like, but uh, they didn't get the run. Pretty deadly. Pretty deadly. Uh, they win the NXT tag titles and uh, the NXT UK tag titles. Uh, I believe both for a second time. If the U- UK might be a third time, but uh, it's very sneakily, very very sneakily, and it's only taken two years. They might be one of the best teams in NXT history. Because what other teams can say they've held both tag titles multiple times? Nobody. That's true. Millie Vanilli out here doing work. Hey. And they were last legend now too. Perfect. That's smart. That's smart. Makes sense. Uh, mm-hmm. Next up, uh, to unify the uh, the women's championships in NXT, Mandy Rose. Mandy Rose beat Mako Satamore and Blair Davenport. And uh, I'm gonna give it an incomplete for the match, uh, just because I started eating lunch, and so my attention was drawn away while I was eating. I had some wing stop. Shout out to mm. Lemon Pepper. <gasps> <laughs> that's my favorite. And he part. like a he like the, the biggest shareholder. Yeah, that, that, something, that, that, like that. That yeah something like that. Something like that. Uh so I'm gonna give it incomplete for the match. I'm gonna give it an A for Mandy because one, it was an obvious choice. Like you're I'm not gonna say, put the belt on these two who women who weren't introduced into the fold until two weeks ago. And the audience don't right. know who the hell they are. Uh one of them yeah. is uh is Mako Satamora. And she's a little bit on the older side, uh, and I also don't think she wants to be in the in the U.S. for a long term. So you couldn't have put the belt on her. And then Blair yeah. Davenport just is not a good representative for your women. If you know, you know. Yeah, I, I, I forgot that, to, but to to like I, I I saw I saw you and Katie talk about it before. I was like, oh shit! Oh, she this, this is literally the entire reason I've never been able to get behind her at NXT UK. Yeah, I was just like, I yeah, I, yeah, I can't rock with that. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you don't know, um, I'll elaborate on a little bit of it. Uh, she was like very uh big. She was like the Triple H of Stardom at one point, right? Like the 2003 yeah. Triple H of Stardom. And uh, there was another mm-hmm. woman in the company, not Stardom. It was it was somewhere in the UK. Um, there was like a Fed in the UK. And she was like maybe running shit, or she was like one of the top talent over there. Her and Will Ospreay, that broke ass nigga, and apparently there was another woman that was there, and they blackballed this woman because she spoke out, uh, you know, as part of speaking out against somebody that was there mm-hmm. who was friends with Blair Davenport and Will Ospreay, and they made sure he kept getting booked, and they blackballed this other woman for uh, speaking out against that person. So, yeah. That's the that's who you want holding one of your women's championships in a publicly traded corporation. Be my guest, but uh, I'm glad it wasn't the way they went. Mandy Rose, however, yeah. can easily be top yes. of the card on a Monday or a Friday night going forward if that's uh you know what they want. Hell yeah, she is she has proven it. She's shown it. It's there. There's plenty of people that's gone down to NXT and it's like they've taken that step forward and um, like just progressed more that that they kind of you know ironed out some some tough spots that they had on the main roster previously but mandy is completely like changed transformed her whole character like she was going like gearing up to more more towards like a soft Trish stratus yeah. on like main roster previously but now it's like 
she's a completely different like it, it, this is this is a whole different person that's coming out so when she goes out and i said the same thing when she comes back up to uh raw or smackdown whichever she goes to she's easily a main event to no question and the fact that anybody thought anyone else was even going to win this match is just ludicrous like in any of these matches like the whole concept was that you know they're shutting down nxt uk and they're going to start up nxt europe why did y'all think that any of these UK champions were going to win these matches? Like, wasn't going to happen. The The whole thing was is that if you weren't being seen on NXT TV already on a, a, a weekly basis on Tuesdays, then don't expect to see them winning any of these championship matches. Like, All right. everyone else is going to go to NXT Europe or whatever spinoff show they have. Facts. It's a pretty deadly. They, they, I mean, I don't know if they count or not. But outside of that, uh, y'all knew what it was. Well, they, 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 they're being featured on 2.0 as much as possible. So it's like, right. but yes, that, boy. It, that, that's what I'm saying. That's my point. Like, you know, like maybe they'll be on NXT Europe, maybe not, but they're on NXT 2.0 now. So it's like, if you're not on that show regularly, then why think that any of them are going to win? So this right. was all mostly foregone conclusions. Like the only, only match that matches that had only like, suspense to it was like the NXT women's tag team title match. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Uh Caden, Caden Carter, Katana Chance, the champs who should have been champs years ago, uh taking on Dewdrop and Nikki ASH. And uh, we didn't talk about this last week because uh Dewdrop and Nikki ASH they did not show back up until after we recorded. Uh, but they popped up and they said you know, Nikki, Nikki Cross, I challenge you guys. We challenge you. You know what I mean? You know how I go. I'm gonna get this a B minus. Yeah. Uh, it was solid, solid little cool down match. Like, per, you know, perfectly placed on the card. Uh, it's Sting. Sting just showed up. Uh, but oh god. Not I'm not in AW. I'm watching Survivor Series 2014. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> not, not here but, uh, yeah toxic attraction they come out and uh you know pretty much distract nikki almost called her nikki cross nikki ash uh do drop you know gets pinned something to keep an eye on uh for the next weeks next few weeks maybe i don't know maybe we, we can keep an eye on it because there, there's something yeah. that they like to do every fall you know war games so We'll like see. It. We'll see. I like it. about that. But uh, what do you think about this? Uh, initially, I had a B plus, but realistically, I I just gave it a B. Um, I wasn't that crazy about it to be honest. Uh, this was kind of my cool down match because, it, like you said, it just got drawn up out of nowhere on NXT, out the blue because we had another space on the card, so why not? Um, I like the idea of you know Nikki Cross and Dewdrop making the rounds. Um, but I mean, realistically, it's just another another team to for uh, Casey and Kate to beat because they earned this. They they need to be champ for a while because we didn't got so many false attempts at it at this point that it's like I, I don't want to see them lose for a while. Not to, especially not the Toxic Attraction too if they coming back out the woodwork because they done had a bunch of runs already. They don't need this no more. Like let them beef with Nikki and Dewdrop for a while. Let them do that. Yeah, I don't want to see them taking titles off nobody else for a while. Facts. Big facts. And uh and in our main event for the NXT and NXT UK championships, Braun Breaker defeats Tyler Bate. I'm gonna get his A plus. Uh this was Braun's best match he has had in his uh 12 month career, something like that. Um uh, <clears throat> you see how easy it is when you give him an opponent that he can easily work with and work off of. Like nothing against, you know, nothing against uh, Joe Gacy. Uh, nothing against oh, everything. Against uh, I, mean, I don't yeah. give a fuck about Joe Gacy. Okay. Not, nothing against, uh, you know, JD uh, McCafe uh, in ring, at least. Everything against him outside of the ring. <laughs> Big head ass nigga. Uh, JD, JD Sheen. <laughs> man. Big Sheen, head ass. Boy. Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> oh, man. Braun Breaker has his Tyler Bate. There's nothing else to say about him. Like, 
first ever NXT UK champ. He the truth. And uh, I mean, Braun was probably always gonna beat him. I thought like you could maybe have Tyler Bate, uh, you know, beat Braun and then have him be like a transitional champ. Cause we want to crown Melo so bad over here, but now I don't know what's what's next for Braun because like they trying to hype up this uh you know this this JD McNuggets again. I don't know. No, no, man. Look, first and foremost, uh, I, I started. I, I'm, I'm gonna settle on B plus. I'll watch it back and maybe bump it up to an A minus. Because at the end of the day, if if Tyler Bate isn't in this match, I'm not invested. Like I said, I wasn't really hyped for it like that because we've been missing the opportunity to to maximize Braun by just moving him up. He doesn't need to still be here. Like, yeah. I, he's either going to sink or swim. So, I mean, all this, this holding him down at NXT to, to be the guy when you have a guy that can do it, you know, it just, it doesn't make sense to me, but um, no, nah, it, it took me a minute to get like fully into the match. The first couple minutes, I was just like, yeah, but then that latter half, when we, they came down the stretch, it was just like, they started knocking this shit out. And this was, in my opinion, this was bronze best match to date. So I'm with you on that. Um, but where you go from here, I, I have no idea. Cause you know, you have that annual tradition coming around the corner. So I guess the next month and a half is just gonna be setting the stage for that. And I don't know who is gonna be on whose side. I don't know where they're gonna come from, but you could set that up. But if you do do that, that it only ends one way. And if anyone needs context, I'll, I'll illuminate for you. We did it with Shayna Baszler and Rhea Ripley about four years ago now, five years ago, four years ago. And uh, we saw how that ended in Mm -hmm. December of that same year. So rinse, repeat, and if Melo is still the North American champion, just double it up. I don't care. Do it. Because they both unify champions at this point, in case y'all forgot. Uh, Melo unified some championships, and Braun just did it again today. So uh, there can only be one at the end of the day. But um, I just I, I need that man. I need it to happen sooner rather than later. Like we have so far passed the the, the perfect opportunity to get Braun elevated at the perfect opportunity. Like I'm still I'm just very concerned th- at this point that he's gonna get up to Raw or SmackDown and it's just gonna be like lukewarm once he gets there. Like he may get a good reaction, but it's like I feel like we're just not taking full advantage of the moment to just do it because what more is it that you need to do for this guy that he's still in the next seat that that's that's my only thing and we've been talking about this already we just mentioned it like he doesn't have that many opponents you can just keep on building new stories like he's about to start to start laughing because if, if if jd mcnugget show up again and he want to run it back then okay that was a good match but we know the result. Like, what's the point in this? And who else are you building to be in the position to challenge him? Because I don't see it. Gacy was Grayson Wally. Not for me personally. Not, no, hell no. I don't. Oh, oh man. Look. And I, I, I heard him that 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 segment. He was talking about oh his mom was disappointed in him. Listen, Mama Waller wouldn't have had nothing to be disappointed in if she had to swallow. We all could have been. Deprived, d- 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 spared of this, this this nonsense that's going on. I don't need that. Uh, but hey, listen. If and when we get to Carmelo handling it and getting there, uh, Apollo could be that. Since we mentioned Grayson, but uh, yeah, I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him there. Don't do it. Don't don't I piss do. me off like that. I want to because no. you know <sighs> you know what we haven't had in a long time. I'm upset. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, just, just for show I, purposes, we need. Look, I, I, I can promise you, I will kick the show off with that if that ever happens in the near future. Like, I won't even talk about what I watched this week. I won't talk. Like, as soon as you introduce me, just hit the hit the button on that because I'm gonna have to get that out the way immediately because I will not be happy. Facts, man. I will contain. I will contain every bit of rage for the entire week from Tuesday 
all the way through to Saturday, Sunday, whichever day we record. I will contain that shit and just let it loose as soon as we get on. Man, big facts, man. So uh, let's uh, before we plug our socials, uh, let's tap back in to see where we at. All, all out. Uh, it looks like Wardlow and oh, yeah. FTR uh, defeated uh, Jay Lethal and the Motor City Machine Guns. So yeah, if you know those on the card. You an impact. You're not getting a win over over AEW, but you thought something changed in the last year? No, never. And then yeah. it looks like Powerhouse Hobbs squash Ricky Starks. So what? Yeah, five minutes. That's some cold. That's some cold shit. Five minutes. He ain't deserve that. He ain't deserve that. That man cut a damn good promo. He ain't deserve that at all. Yeah, we're gonna refresh this page a few more times later this evening. But for now, let's plug our social set. All right, y'all can find me at Rick Havoc24 on Instagram and on Twitter. Also, y'all can go check out the Havoc Hour, talking sports and entertainment on all platforms where you find Young Kings Wrestling, Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, and the video versions up on YouTube. And also the Instagram page, underscore the Havoc Hour, underscore, where I keep my posts up. Uh, I I was honestly, I was going to record yesterday because, um, everything that uh been going on this week but um the way that game stressed me out man and it was going kind of late too <laughs> but uh yeah man i'm uh september and this month nfl is coming back on this week so yeah man i'm definitely i, I gotta get something this weekend you you've been betting these last couple of weekends on college I I I put one in yesterday. <laughs> I put one in yesterday. And it, you put Florida on your ticket, I, did you? I did. You did? Hey, I did. Okay. And the funny, the funny, the funny thing was, is that 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 hit that was fine. I think it was the only the only one that I, that didn't hit was. I will pull this up. I got I got I got it I got it right here. Because I'm pretty sure I had just about all of them. Oh no, I had I had Notre Dame Ohio State going over fifty nine, so that ain't hit. That was that was a drag. Mm. And then Oregon and Georgia got just under like fifty four, because I had them going over. Oh, so then was everything Georgia else hit? I yeah, <laughs> I I had Georgia over fifty four, but um uh, no nah, Florida I had Florida they hit. I had um I don't know why I had. Uh, NC State and East Carolina for under 51, but that hit. And then I had Cincinnati, Arkansas going over 53, which they just blew that out. So, <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, let me just, let me just, let me just hurt myself real quick. Start the year off right. <laughs> hey, I'm, I might put some bread on uh, on Oklahoma in a couple weeks when they come to Lincoln. Because mm. if I'm going to be upset and mad, I'm gonna be upset, and mad with more money in my pocket. <laughs> That's how we do around here. And uh, I am the Thespian TC Fontaine. If you feel so inclined to follow me on Instagram at tc.fontaine, follow me on Twitter at tc Fontaine, or you can follow Young Kings Wrestling everywhere at YK Wrestling, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Nobody posts on Facebook, but it's there. If you want to just get our numbers up, make it look good, and do that. And uh, yeah, I think I have a song I'm going to close out with. I'm going to just read the lyrics. I'm not going to sing it. Uh, I don't feel like singing. But uh, I'm about to take it old school on some Motown type stuff. Stuff uh, mm. you know, our grandparents was listening to. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is back, you know, you'd be on like Johnny Carson and shit. And you'd be real quick before I do this. i seen... I seen um, I seen a video clip on Twitter this past week of like this old Frankie Lyman performance from back in the fifties, and apparently the audience didn't know that Frankie Lyman was a black man, and the audience was filled oh, with a God. bunch of white girls, and they all looked confused and they all looked upset because they've been thirsting for an N word this this entire time. That's that's the exact look. <laughs> they they cut to like ten different white girls. 
and all of them had just this look on their face like who is this i'm not gonna say it but you know what i mean (laughs) but uh yeah anyway uh song la prove too much for the man too much for the man he couldn't make it so he's leaving the life that he's come to know he said he's going back to find what's left of his world the world he left behind not so long ago he's leaving leaving on that midnight train to georgia even on the midnight train Was that cool? Was that enjoyable? I I, I say yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see what everybody say. Hey. I, I fuck with it. Hey, well, as long as y'all fuck with it, then we gone. <laughs> Happy Labor Day, if y'all celebrate.